Hey guys, Icon here from Voclia Music. In this video, we're gonna look at some tips and tricks for composing bass lines with Doubler 2. Bass lines can be one of the hardest things to get down, even for experienced producers or musicians. Doubler 2 is a great way to overcome this difficulty because it allows you to vocalize your ideas, turn these into MIDI in real time, and then have a bunch of material to choose from while continuing your production process. Here are some examples of the bass lines we'll be creating. So first of all, before loading up our beats and bass sounds, let's just set some basic settings in Doubler. So we don't need triggers, so we can turn that off. And in the pitch section, it always helps to choose a scale. Now, if you don't know what kind of scale you want to work in or which scale you want to work in, you can always head to the key tab, sing in some notes, and it'll detect a key for you. But for now, we're just going to choose our own scale. So we'll go with D sharp minor, for example. And you have the seven notes right here. And the other important parameter in the play tab to consider before singing some bass lines is the stickiness one here. Stickiness is basically how hard the software makes it for you to switch from note to note. So if you find that while you're singing, a lot of notes are jumping around, you might want to increase your stickiness to higher. But if you're singing a faster part and you think you're going to use a lot of notes at a very fast pace, you can always dial this down to taste. Lastly, in the play tab, one thing to consider is the octave. It's much easier to sing accurate notes with doubler with percussive higher sounds like ba 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 da da. That is where this octave control comes in handy a lot because you can lower the octave of the note you're singing. And we have a couple of different beats loaded up here. Here's the first one. One really key factor while recording bass lines is that if you do it at a slower tempo, you'll be able to comfortably sing more notes and come up with more interesting bass lines. If you keep the tempo fast and try to sing really fast notes with doubler, your accuracy might be less and you might be worried about the software following exactly what you're doing as opposed to coming up with more unique ideas. So even though this beat is 115 BPM, using Ableton's Warp, I'm just gonna lower the BPM. Every DAW has its own way to slow down audio and adapt it. Ableton's Warp is definitely one of the easier ways to get it done. Now that we've brought the BPM down to maybe 85, I'm going to use Doubler's MIDI Capture plugin. How this plugin works is you place it on a MIDI channel. So it's not on the same channel as your instrument. It has its own MIDI channel, but in terms of arming while recording, you still arm the instrument you're going to use. And when you open Doubler MIDI Capture, you hit Enable Recording. And then when you hit Play in your DAW, it'll start recording a MIDI clip. And the advantage with recording with MIDI Capture is that you have the option to clean up your MIDI. So it gets rid of any ghost notes or notes from other octaves that you didn't sing. I've armed this drive bass channel. I'm going to come here, hit spacebar, and do a long jam, basically. But the jam's goal isn't to lay down perfect lines, it's to really explore, think of it as throwing a bunch of colors of paint at a wall. And then we're going to go through and pick the best moments, separate them out, and maybe use them as bass lines in a future track. That may have sounded off and unmusical when sang from beginning to start, but there are definitely some moments and it's going to sound much better when the MIDI cleanup algorithm is applied. So I'm just going to drag that in there now to my bass channel. So 
So already, even at the slow tempo, it's starting to sound better. But now when I bring it to its original tempo of 115, it's going to get faster and sound much more professional and played fast. In Ableton, you can select an area and hit Command or Control L on your keyboard. And this will loop it. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop different sections here and see if maybe we've come up with a good bass line or two or three. <laughs> Try to go for a longer one, maybe two bars. Not really, maybe here. What we can do is we can select the area and hit Command or Control E. That makes it its own MIDI clip. And then we have it here to be able to edit. So you're not always going to sing the perfect bass line. You might sing something great, and it'll require one or two touches here or there. Let's look around here towards the end. Nope. That's what I'm talking about. So just by singing and vocalizing a bunch of my ideas, I could do this for hours and hours basically and come up with so much MIDI information that's been cleaned up thanks to MIDI capture and just cut all these good baseline ideas and use them later. Another thing that's really fun to do while doing this is changing the bass sound. So that's the first example. Now let's go to a different kind, maybe a more housey kind of beat. So now again, the same process. We have MIDI capture ready. We hit enable recording. Maybe we'll change our key just so things sound a little bit more different. I'll just switch to uh, an F minor instead. Doubler MIDI capture, enable recording. Now when we hit spacebar, it's gonna start to record but I forgot to lower the tempo first to make it easier for us to sing. Again, I'm dragging the clean version. And I'm just going to bring the tempo back. Potentially good moments here, but we have to cut. if we can fish out another one. Try 
like switching out the bass sound. It's really fun to switch bass sounds once you have the MIDI ready and going. Maybe this. Oh, that's nice. So for example, I know myself and I would have never thought to maybe put this last note here at the very end of the bar there, right before that transition back to the beginning. So you find yourself doing things and coming up with ideas that you wouldn't even while playing an instrument or even while programming in MIDI manually. And you can just see the feel also of these notes here. It's not quantized. so. That means that there's a natural groove to the ideas as well, and that singing slower really helps with that. Definitely, if you're gonna take anything away, try to sing busy melodies at slow tempos, and then speed them up, and you'll come up with some really interesting stuff that you wouldn't have normally done before. Uh, we'll look at one, one last example with a more trap kind of beat, so I'll take the BPM up to 140. With these kinds of beats, a subby bass line could do well, so we have a subby sound loaded up. Again, we'll change the scale, maybe just go G sharp minor this time. So this is already a slow beat, but we can lower the tempo maybe down just a bit to help us out. That should be fine. Head to MIDI capture, enable recording, and hit spacebar to start recording. slow tempo as an excuse to sing more notes will help you come up with some bass fills by mistake and not just bass lines because you don't want your bass lines to be that busy all the time maybe but you can then separate those uh, clips that you've used busier notes and use them as occasional fills even let's try to do something like that with this one so i'll just drag this clean clip here so we'll raise this back to 140 Catchy little bass fill here, I'll just separate that, rename the clip, mark it as fill one. Let's keep looking around. Already there's a bunch of loops here, I'm just gonna loop this section. Just calling that moment one. You can do anything to mark these, you can mark them with red, that's something some people do. And you can alt drag to just separate them out here. So maybe I'll have this moment playing twice and then that fill coming in. I'll copy that first note over just to fill. And let's see how this sounds. Something like that. Maybe there are some other moments. I really like that fill here. You can start with a beat uh, like we have done and change the beat depending on the melodies or bass lines you come up with here. You can use shorter loops.
Yeah, that's a way to uh, construct your own unique and more complex sounding bass lines. And I didn't mention it that much at the beginning, but definitely, again, approach this as a way to throw in a bunch of ideas, sing a bunch of ideas, record tons and tons of MIDI, get into a very creative space, and then just cut down your ideas, use loops to find the best moments, separate them out, and then use them in whatever current track you're working on or any other uh, productions that you'll work on in the future. We hope you enjoyed that video and if you've used doubler 2 to record any parts in any of your tracks be sure to send them over we'd love to check them out and if you have any questions about what we discussed or any general question about doubler 2 be sure to leave a comment and we'll get right back to you for more information head to voclio.com and definitely subscribe to our channel for all of our latest videos see you next time